What is good, people? It is Open Night, and today I am back with Volcarona. Now, before I get into that, I have to say that I'm sorry for not uploading for a bit because work kept me busy, and at the same time, I actually couldn't find a Hyper Offense theme to use for the next video in that series. So I thought, hey, why not just create a new type of video on this channel? And today, we're going to be looking at Team Tech Volcarona. I will be building a team around the feature mod, which today will be Volcarona, and playing a game off screen. This game that I play will be a bit tough for us, hopefully have some close calls, and the reason I'm trying to do that is I want to showcase this team's raw power and resilience and for as long as I'm doing team text, that's gonna be that's gonna be the idea. Unless you would prefer to see some live gameplays with with uh, with teams that I can sweep through or anything. So do let me know in the comments what kind of gameplay you would like to see. But for now, that's what I have planned. With that, I'm gonna jump straight into the team. First things first, we have Volcarona. Now, I love Volcarona. I have been swept by Volcarona so many times more times than probably even Magirna, and that's counting all the times that I played it in Gen 7 as well. Volcarona is just an amazing Pokemon, okay? Um, it has an amazing typing in Bugfire, amazing offensive typing. We also resist U-turns, which is really nice for, um, for getting Flame Body activated in case someone thinks, you know, they can just get momentum on us for free. Um, and Heavy Duty Boots means previously, this thing used to take 50% damage just for switching in if Stealth Rock was up. But now, I don't care what you, my opponent wants to set up, but I, I can just swim, bring this thing in for free and not take any damage. I'm, I'm honestly surprised this thing hasn't seen more usage, but it is a pretty powerful Pokemon, don't get me wrong. Volcarona, always a favorite. Now let's move on to the set. We have Quiver Dance, Bug Buzz, Flamethrower, and Roost. Quiver Dance, that's how we set up and win, obviously. Bug Buzz and Flamethrower, best stab moves you have. Uh, you could also run Fire Blast, but I'm not about that 85% life. Uh, Fiery Dance is... I mean, I'm sacrificing 10 power for a 50% chance to raise my special attack by one. I just... I don't think it's very reliable, you know? You get... Like, it, it's totally viable. Um, but I just don't, I just don't like it. Um, and finally we have Roost. I prefer to go for Roost because like I said, if we're running Flame Body instead of Swarm, what we want to do is we want Pokemon to think they can get a free U-turn on us. And if they do, we have a little bit of chance to burning them, which is always a nice thing. And Roost will keep us healthy. Now people can also run Psychic. Uh, which will be able to deal with things like um, Toxapex and maybe if you're like really boosted, maybe I don't know, like maybe two or three boosts off, then I guess you could Psychic, uh, Galarian Slowbro, or sorry, yeah, Galarian Slowbro. Uh, another viable option is always Giga Drain, which you can run to deal with Swampert or um, Hippo. Uh, but we're going to be running with Roost today because the rest of my team has all the tools to deal with all those Pokemon that I talked about. Now, I already mentioned one Pokemon that will be troubling us, which will be Toxapex. And uh, another Pokemon that on first sight that will be troubling us is Heatran, for which we have Zero Aura with Boots. Now, Zero Aura is really versatile. You can use it to break things. You can use it as a pivot. And in this case, I'm kind of using it as a more offensive pivot with Boots as well. Uh, Magnet is another great item, which would uh, let its electric type moves have 1.2 times power, which means Plasma Fist is going to be putting a hole or possibly even killing anything that's weak to electric. And... I don't think it even takes uh, neutral attacks very well. Like Pokemon that take neutral electric damage will do very well if you have a magnet on it. Lefties is good if you wanted to gain uh, some kind of uh, recovery back along with uh, Rillaboom here, giving it some grassy terrain support. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can also run Life Orb, although that's a very offensive for my liking. I like this thing to be a little bit healthy. So we're going with Boots. It's totally up to you. I think lefties might be better for, for this team, but boots is also fine. There's nothing wrong with boots. Um, typically on these uh, physically 
oriented set. So you're gonna see Volt Switch instead to kind of gain momentum. But I have three Pokemon here that uh, are able to do that for me. So I thought Bulk Up might be a little unorthodox, but it will give us a chance to finish things off at the end of the uh, end of the game, right? Um, it's such a really good late game sweeper with this amazing speed tier at 143, and it has a pretty good attack too. So nothing to complain about. And it also deals with both Toxapex and, uh, and, uh, what was the other Pokemon? Heatran, there we go. Toxapex and Heatran very well. Now, one Pokemon that we still have a little bit of a problem with, uh, is Hippo. Uh, so we have both Lele. I'll, I'll come to Rillaboom later. Actually, you know what? No, I'll, I'll talk about Rillaboom now. So, like I said, we still need to cover, uh, our, uh, Hippowdon weakness, so we have Rillaboom and Choice Band. Rillaboom, let me just say this. Uh, this might be a little bit of a hot take, but Rillaboom is the best grass starter of all time. Okay, let's not get it twisted. I know some people are gonna come in the comment section and be like, oh, Open Night, my, my favorite grass starter from uh, Gen 5 or Gen, Gen 2 or G Gen 6 is my, is, I think it's the best. I think Severe is, shut up, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, Rillaboom is the best. You know why? Because this thing used to be used to be chilling in RU or something uh, before this thing got Grassy Glide in DLC 1. And once it got Grassy Glide in DLC 1, it literally shot up to... Where is this uh, viability ranking? It's at A rank. It, for a starter, mono grass type. And look at all these Pokemon here. It's just chilling here in A rank. And it's, it's as good as Zero Aura and Tapu Lele. So you're telling me that this Pokemon is not anything but the best grass start of all time? Piss off. But anyway, we have Grassy Glide for Stab, which I think it goes up to 91 or 92 power with Grassy Terrain up, which, and you have plus one priority. Literally the only thing we're gonna be spamming with this for the most part. Knock off just to get rid of items. Although Wood Hammer is also totally fine, but we're probably trying to knock off like Corviknight or something. Uh, so Woodhammer is probably what's run here, but I just prefer Super Power for the fighting coverage. And finally, we have some momentum option in U-Turn with uh, Choice Band U-Turn, always going to be able to deal damage. Um, following this, we just want a little bit more offensive pressure. Um, kind of maybe perform the same role as Zero Aura, where you come in, maybe take a special hit or something, because Top Lele does have a very good spadev, right? So it can help... Um, help Swampert out with some uh, special attacks and hopefully it's um, set up and sweep too. Now Blissey, if it decides to wall Volcarona, can be swept by all three of these. The only problem is I prefer not to take a Toxic, which means something that can come in and kill this would be nice. So if I can set up a Combine and this, if the Blissey in question is a Spadev Blissey, Psyshock straight up kills it, and if it's not a spit of Blissey, it's a 2 KO with Focus Blast depending on if I hit it. Hopefully it doesn't come down to it, maybe we can take it off with, with Rillaboom, but you know, just uh, just getting rid of more and more of Volcarona's problems is always going to be a good thing. And of course, Top Alele with Focus Blast will put a dent in Heatran, even unboosted if I'm not wrong, but we can just check the Calyx for that. Lele versus Heatran. Yeah, unboosted Lele is a 2 EKO if we can hit the Focus Blast. So, you know. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I love Tapu Lele, okay? This thing is my waifu. If I if I could choose to have a legendary Pokemon with me at all times, it's gonna be Tapu Lele. I, 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 I just have such profound love and concern and care for this Pokemon to the point where no matter what team I'm building, if there is a reason for me to put a Lele in there, I'm gonna put a Lele in there. And with that, we've just kind of covered our four Pokemon offensive core. We have two um, physical attackers. We have two special attackers. It looks very balanced to me. We have so much coverage here. Um, finally, we kind of just want to wrap all of this up and be like, hmm, what am I weak against? And Kyurem, Choice Ban Kyurem, I mean not Choice Ban, Choice Specs Kyurem looks, uh, looks a little troublesome for us, right? So we're gonna have, we're gonna have Corviknight here, uh, not necessarily for Kyurem in itself, I just said it because, uh, well it is a problem for us, don't get me wrong, I, I, I'll, I'll come to the Kyurem problem when we come to Swampert, but we have Corviknight here because uh, we'll be able to take care of anything on the physical side with Corviknight. 
um, and also Cinderace is gone, so Corviknight just, you know, it's it's just way better as a defensive pivot. Uh, Rocky Helmet would ensure that no one gets free U-turns off and whatnot, so uh, always a good Pokemon in that regard. We have this thing as our Defogger, rules will keep it healthy. Body Press will put a dent in T-Tar and Bisharp in, I don't know if Ferrothorn takes that much, but hey, we'll be able to dent it, right? Like if it wants to lead seed us, I guess we'll figure out a way around it but if it's not running leech seed i think we'll be able to dent it actually let me just do the calcs on that versus ferrothorn so yeah it's a it's a 3.1 chance per percent chance to 3 ko after recovery but like i said if it's not running leech seed um i don't really know i don't really know how um ferrothorn can even touch us so um Corbinet is just you know, it's just a no no BS mod that you can just put on the team. Now, Swamper. Swamper is the worst performing member on this team, unfortunately. But I think it's cool. It's all it's a Gen 3, so, you know, Gen 3 is my favorite gen, so I'm always going to find a way to um, put Swampert in. We have Rocks, Earthquake, Toxic, and Flip Dinner. Now, coming back to that Kyurem thing, our team just gets pretty destroyed by Specs Kyurem. So if you want to circumvent that, I highly recommend running a Spidef Blissey that knows Soft Boiled Ice Beam, which is to get rid of Landorus, Stealth Rock, and Teleport. I think that um, that's the best set that you can come up with that can kind of basically do the same thing that Swampert is trying to do here. And also we won't be weak to Bliss, I mean, cure him. So um, that's a good, that's a good alternative you can look at. Swampert's fine. Like it's not like I haven't been able to win uh Kira matchups. Like if you if you think Ice Beam is gonna come out, you can always go into Volk, which doesn't take that much if I'm not wrong. Volk versus Kyurem. Choice specs. Yeah, so we're only taking 37 to I mean, I I shouldn't say only, but we're not we're not we're not being dead to too much. We just have to play around the Dracos and I think we're fine. So uh, so yeah that kind of covers the team i hope you guys like the team and let me know if, uh, if you have a problem with any of these pokemon let me know if you like the team and uh, i will be back with a good game all right people so i did end up finding a game that was pretty interesting this person had a choice specs Kyurem, which like I already mentioned before was a problem for my team. It was also a balanced team as compared to my more bulky offense team. And if I could get rid of that Chansey and Feeny, basically this game's mine, right? So I look at this team and uh, to be honest, I just expected the Kyurem to come out. So I went for Zero Aura, just try to knock it off, but he went to his own Zara as well. Maybe he could have let Lando, but it's whatever. So he goes into Tangrowth. Now this Tangrowth turns out to be physically defensive. As you'll see, this is the biggest problem for my entire team. I uh, go into Cormorant because I don't know what he wants to do. He knocks off my helmet. All pretty standard stuff. Um, so, okay. So the reason why I don't didn't go into Volk there, even though that's that was the best play to get rid of this thing, was I just wanted to scout for Sleep Outer. And uh, if you didn't know, electric Pokemon can't be put asleep, so that's why I just wanted to scout for it. Uh, so it turns out he did have Sleep Powder, which means going into Volk on this was always a risk, right? Because I don't, I I didn't really want Volk to be the one sleeping. Maybe something like Corviknight would have been better, but more importantly, I just wanted to whittle this thing down, so. Um, I bulked up thinking I could CC this thing, but that was a bad play. He just Giga Drains and crits me. Um, I'm forced to switch out into Corviknight here. He misses another Sleep Outer. And then I U-turn out to Rillaboom because this U-turn is going to hurt because I do have ban. Um, I have a Chowie's ban on this Rillaboom. Now, I don't like that I gave, I'm giving this Tangrowth recovery, but it is what it is. Like I, like I said, I just wanted this thing whittled down so that um my my uh other defensive pokemon don't have a, don't have to deal with this so he swats on his zero aura because like i said he he wasn't taking another u-turn i mean he wasn't going to take another u-turn and go out into zero aura myself he sub sub very interesting uh set by this person uh sub zero aura 
He goes into Lando and I knock it off. It turns out it was choice specs, which is absolutely no problem for us. For us, Cor Corviknight um, walls this thing for days. Um, you turns out into Feeny. I'm not sure what Feeny wanted to do until I went into Swampert, and then turns out it was just Major's Madness. Um, and then he was taunt. Really weird Feeny set, not gonna lie. Nature's Madness and Taunt, so I'm guessing he just wanted to um he just wanted to prevent defensive Pokemon from being able to do the thing, I guess, while Nature's Madness will just whittle it down. Um and then he goes for Taunt. I can't I can't hit my stuff. I mean I can't throw up rocks, which is fine. I just flip into Rillaboom to force this thing out. Um, and then he goes on into Tangrowth as he should. Now, I don't know why I glided. I, maybe I expected him to stay in because I, I was playing on low ladder again. But he did make the right play by going into Tangrowth. I should have U-turned out. Uh, I think I was just a little bit scared of staying in because of that Feeny staying in if I if I uh, went for glide because I really didn't want that Swampert getting whittled down into... Um, in. in I just didn't want the Swampert getting whittled down in case that Zero Aura had some tricks up its sleeve because it was already substitute, so I didn't know what else it was running, right? So, uh, goes out into Tangrowth, we got into Corviknight, same old, same old. Uh, this one's a little bit grindy. The reason why I even chose this game was because the grind aspect can kind of show you how this team can actually win in the long run. Even though, like, I had more immediate threats like involved to deal with this Tangrowth, but just playing around it, goes out into Lando. You're gonna see that Tangrowth come in quite a bit, so... Um, I mean, it, it's clear that uh, my opponent recognized that getting that tang keeping the Tangrowth healthy was key in shutting down my defensive core, at least. Uh, so it goes into Chansey, Estasis, and then I roost up just to keep my Corby healthy. Estasis again. Um, we body press that thing for some pretty good chip. He Estasis again, and then we both try to keep our Mons healthy. Um, goes out into Lando, uh, I expected him to stay there, but like I said, Lando isn't doing anything to me, so the fact that he went into it is not a problem. And then he goes out into Feeny, this is the freest U-turn of my life, so I U-turn out into the Boomer. And, uh, this time, I expected him to go Tangro, so he goes out into Lando, and then I just U-turn out. Uh, what I didn't expect here was that my opponent was ready to actually sack my Lando because he went for a U-turn, but um, this is also fine. Uh, like I said, that can't, the Lando wasn't doing much, anything to my team at all, so he just swaps out for a little bit. Uh, so the reason why I went into Lele was, uh, let me see, I had a little bit of an opening once he went into Lando. So I knew this thing wasn't faster than me, and if he wanted to Earthquake me, that's fine. I think I can take one Earthquake from Scarf Lando. I calm minded up, he U-turns out to Zero Aura, I don't know to see if I had something or whatever, but uh, so I did the calcs for this and I didn't die, that's why I went for, I stayed in and then I went for Moonblast, sorry Psyshock. Um, but now we're in a really good spot, that Lando's dead, uh, which means Zero Aura is kind of free to click Plasma Fist, well not really, I guess he still has Zero Aura, but I can at least spook it out a little bit. Um, okay. Feeny was never the play. He should have always, always gone to Chansey. Feeny was never the play, but uh, he just decides to go into Feeny, and then I just take it for free. So, so you know, he just sacked two Pokemon to this thing. Now, at that point, I knew I was gonna die, and I make this very, uh, very nice switch into Zero Aura, and because I have Volt Absorb, I just absorb his Plasma Fists, and then I gain some health back. Um, Tangrowth comes in again, like I said, Tangrowth always going to be a pain in the ass. Um, we U-turn out, same thing, just whittle this thing down, don't let anything, if he wants to hit Sleep Outer and put anything to sleep, at this point I think I was ready because, um, because now Volcarone only had one problem to deal with and that was Chansey, and I could slowly whittle that down. Uh, I just went into Rillaboom just to kind of... I don't know why you didn't knock off that Rillaboom. That would have done so much damage. So now he finally brings out that Kyurem. And we go into Zero Aura because if we knock this thing off, this is not a problem in the least. He goes out into Tangrowth. I was just trying to knock it off. Um, this is fine. On we go into the same routine. I know it's a little bit boring, um, but 
we ju- we do what we have to do to win, right? Uh, so I just wanted to burn a sleep turn, that's why I did that, and then I went into Zero Aura. Now this is where things get a little spicy. So he subs up, I knock knock off the thing, and he's bulk up, and I'm like, okay, so I guess you're bulk up, I'll bulk up too, and my man is fucking drain punch. This Zero Aura is substitute plasma fists, bulk up and drain punch, and wait, 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 wait for it. So I bulk up again because, I don't know, like I didn't think it was going to do much, right? And then he bulks up, I knock off, and his fucking item was black belt. He's, sorry, I didn't I didn't show that, but uh, for those who don't know what black belt does, black belt improves fighting type's power, the power of fighting type moves by 1.2 times. So this guy's strategy was to whittle everything down with that black belt drain punch. It's actually pretty smart. Um, he was doing a, quite a bit of damage to me, but once I knocked that thing off, there is no way drain punch was killing me because. So previously, drain punch did thirty six point three percent with that black belt. Um, I'm at twenty seven percent health with two times defense. He's definitely not doing that. So I just, um, it didn't matter that I won the speed die here. Um, the more important thing is I just got the CC off and then killed it. It was always, you know, gonna die. Go out into Corviknight again. Just wall this thing a little bit. The idea was also to kind of pressure stall that those sleep outers and giga drains and whatever. If I could, I woke up and then I roost up. Now the only reason why I chose to stay in here was just to see what kind of cure me was. Maybe he was like some boots, you know, like boots and four attacks or something i don't know but i knew he had to be special because he had two physical attackers i just didn't know what kind it was obviously it was specs it's always specs um so he goes on into this i try to knock off again and then on we go with the same routine and this okay so he sets up uh i mean he uh he puts me to sleep right so that's fine all fine and then Okay, so like I said, he never expected me. To, first time our dear Volcarona is hitting the field, and, and he was not gonna hit Draco because Ice Beam was always gonna kill everything. So Ice Beam was the safest place. I went into that. I took advantage of it and went into Volk. And like like we saw in the calcs, this didn't do shit to us. We have a chance to roost and then keep our thingy healthy. He goes into Chansey, we go into Swampert. Now, I went into Swampert because I wanted to set up rocks and give that cure and limited switch ins because he doesn't have a chance to defog rate. And it's going to take 25% every time it comes in on rocks. Um, this game would have been a lot easier if I had set up rocks earlier, but that Feeny really made my life painful with that taunt. Um, but it's okay. Um, so he toxics us, and then this whole series of events happens. He. This chance he was seismic toss, soft boil, toxic, and aromatherapy. Um, he really just wanted to keep his Pokemon healthy. So he kills the Swamper, and then we go into Boomer, and then it was just a matter of superpowers. I didn't think this thing would actually be able to take a superpower that well, but it was good to know it was fully physically defensive. Uh, we go into Corviknight. And my dude has Focus Blast, yo! I've actually never seen this set. Like, I've never seen Focus Blast on this thing, but uh, but now I've seen it. And um, so I guess that was for Corviknight, maybe? Um, I mean, I don't know what else he would have. Maybe Melmetal too? Uh, the point is, he has Focus Blast, and thankfully we didn't die, because when he hits the Sleep Powder, Sleep Claws gets activated, and uh, in OU, only one Pokemon can be sleep asleep at a time, and my Corviknight was asleep, so we're fine. Goes out into Chansey, we whittle this thing now with a little flamethrower, and then I immediately want to put some pressure on him, so I go out onto the Boomer, and then this Tangrowth, like I said, he can't keep doing this for as long as I have rocks up. Um, something is gonna get whittled down, and then we, same, same thing, we go into Zero Aura because I just wanted to sack it, because at this point I just realized, uh, it was just a matter of breaking that chancy. So I go into Lele because I just needed that sack. And then I calm mind up. And then I, at this point I just win. Because I calm mind up again. And with two calm minds I did the calc. Chansey is uh, it's a 2 KO on Chansey with Psyshock. Uh, he s tosses, which is fine. Um, this thing is almost dead. And then he kills it and then we go into the boomer and okay so i did the calc again i knew u-turn would kill this thing and i really wanted significant damage on that tangro so that vulcan just come in and finish this off 
so he stays in with this i u-turn um and then it's a wrap from here he goes in to cure him it's i'm faster so good you know nice try flamethrower and then another flamethrower just killed this thing and we won that was 71 moves i really didn't you know it, like the game didn't have to go for that long but um but it is what it is it was really powerful and it played super super safely as you saw like i didn't bring that volk out until i knew i had a reason to bring it out lele came in and then put in some work every mod on this team put in work like if i didn't have rocks up with swamper like it, this game wouldn't have gone that fast i was able to whittle down the tangled with uh u-turns from rillaboom and also pressure that feeny Corviknight was there to help us with uh, Kyurem and Lando. Zero Aura was also a champ being able to tank his opposing Zero Aura. And uh, you might think Volt Switch would have been better against matchups like this with Tangrowth, where I can I could have just gotten free momentum with it. But if I didn't have bulk up, I probably would have just lost to the Zero Aura. So, you know, sometimes you just have to take care of like those minute differences. Like, yeah, sure, I didn't I lost some momentum with it, but um, I was still able to U-turn around with these two and just break down that Tangrowth over the long run, which is fine. And of course, Volcarona was going to always um, sweep at the end. It was a good game. Um, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what you saw. I'll drop this team down in the description as usual. If you'd like to see more of Volcarona or any other Pokemon at all, leave a request in the comments and I'll do a team tag. And with that, this video is coming to an end, so peace.